everyone, how's it going? Today, I'm out with the DJI Mini 3 Pro deep in the forest, about to do a stress test on the obstacle avoidance sensors, and see how well the drone handles really complicated environments like leaves, branches, twigs, bushes, and more. Well, let's jump right in. Okay, so let's first take a look at where we can find the obstacle avoidance settings. In the top right, you can see a sensor icon. This sensor icon will tell us whether or not the obstacle avoidance sensors are functioning. A white icon means the sensors are on, and a red means that the sensors are off. It's important to note that these sensors only function if there is sufficient lighting, which means that if you fly in dark areas, the obstacle avoidance sensors may turn off by themselves. If this happens, a message will pop up and the sensor icon will turn red. Next, we can change the way the obstacle avoidance behaves. If we press on the three dots in the top right, in the safety tab we can find the obstacle avoidance settings. There are three modes of obstacle avoidance, and the first one is bypass. This is where the drone will find a course through the obstacles and evade them without stopping. Now, you can also see the menu has expanded and shows an option to disable sideways flight. Enabling this feature will prevent the Mini 3 Pro from flying to either side. Since the Mini 3 Pro doesn't have any sideways sensors, enabling this option will give a much safer flight. The next obstacle avoidance mode is break, which is when the drone stops and hovers in place if an obstacle is in the way. I would recommend enabling this mode if you're flying in open spaces rather than closed spaces like a forest, because as soon as the drone detects any obstacles it begins to slow down, and this would lead to a broken up flight. You can also disable the obstacle avoidance sensors if you wish, but doing this means you'll have to manually evade obstacles which increases the risk of collisions. Disabling this feature can offer more control, but also demands a higher level of attention and skill from the pilot. In each mode, we also have the option to enable a radar map. This will display obstacles in real time on a map of the drone's surroundings. Orange lines mean that the obstacles are moderately close to the drone, while red shows obstacles which are much closer to the drone. This can be really useful to quickly check where the obstacles are around the drone while flying. Alright, so let's now take a look at the bypass mode. The obstacle avoidance is turned on, and you can also see red and orange indicators on the screen. As the drone approaches a tree, the sensors detect it and the drone flawlessly swings down to the left and continues on the flight path. With more trees coming, the drone yet again evades these with no problem. The sensors are also functioning as expected when the drone is flying backwards and avoids obstacles very well. When flying around obstacles, it's important to note that the return to home feature may require the pilot to intervene as the drone is flying back to the home point to avoid obstacles. This also shows up when the return to home button is pressed on the screen. Alright, the drone does a great job when avoiding tree trunks, so now let's try something more difficult. Here, the drone is coming up to a bush with lots of leaves, and this time the drone flies over the obstacle. You can see that the drone always finds an optimal route to avoid the obstacles in front of it while also making sure the flight is as smooth as possible. Here we can also see that the drone doesn't just evade obstacles by flying around them, but also by flying over them. Before we move on to the next mode, let's see how the drone flies through a very dense bush. Moving forward slightly faster this time at 3 meters per second, you can see that the drone flies towards a gap in the leaves. It finds a route through, but barely misses a branch. The drone keeps flying, and once again it evades the obstacles very well. You can also see on the radar how close the obstacles were to the drone. So this was definitely a very tough environment to fly through, but now let's see how the drone handles flying backwards through the same flight path. The manoeuvre begins as expected, but just before the drone flies out of the bush, the drone falls to the ground. So, why did the drone crash? Well, it's not too difficult to see why. The drone ended up right underneath a lot of really thin branches, and it seems as if the obstacle avoidance sensors can't detect small objects like this, leading to a crash. If we look at the radar right before the crash, there were no obstacles showing up, meaning that the thin branches were indeed overlooked by the sensors. Luckily, no major damage happened. One of the propellers was chipped, so I did have to replace it. I also calibrated the gimbal, and after rebooting the drone, everything was back to normal. Let's continue with the obstacle avoidance test. 
Alright, let's now move over to the break mode. Once again, obstacle avoidance is functioning, and let's begin with a tree trunk. As the drone flies towards the tree, it does not fly around it, but rather it stops and hovers in place. Even when the controller tells the drone to move forward, the drone stays in place. Let's now go over to a thick bush and see if the drone behaves any differently. The drone flies towards the bush, and we can see that even before the red colour shows up on the radar, the drone starts slowing down. Let's see how this looks from a third person perspective. The drone flies towards the tree, and once it detects it, it stops. The same occurs when flying backwards. The sensors detect the tree, and the drone stops. So there we have it. I was actually really surprised at how well the drone avoided these obstacles. It goes without saying that the obstacle avoidance sensors can definitely detect most of the obstacles, and the system can always find a path through them even in very difficult conditions. The only time this failed was when the drone encountered very thin branches which were too small to be picked up by the sensors, leading to the crash. It was also interesting to see how the system tells the drone to start slowing down in the brake mode long before the obstacle was close to the drone to make the flight as smooth as possible. I also really liked how the drone doesn't just fly around obstacles in the bypass mode, but can also fly over or under them. It really does show that the drone always finds an optimal route regardless of how big the obstacles are. So I hope you enjoyed this test, because I certainly did. If you got something out of this video, then please let me know by clicking the like button, and I also recommend you take a look at my channel where I have many more videos and tutorials about how to get more out of your drone flights, as well as showreels from very interesting locations. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.